Okay. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for today. I want to thank you so much for the blessing of this lesson. We pray that you are going to start off with our lesson. We pray that you may give us the knowledge and understanding that we can be able to get whatever our church is going to teach us, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, like we said in this lesson, uh, we are going to be revising uh, what we call electrostatic force uh, because uh, depending on what many of you were asking, uh, you asked us that we first go through electricity, others were suggesting light, and then I said it is okay, we can balance such that this week uh, with uh, this week, we concentrate on electrostatics. Then next week, or when time allows, we shall as well look at optics. But why did I choose electrostatics? Or why did I choose electricity compared to light? It is because uh, electricity has uh, those three numbers, uh, the three optional numbers. And is it is always easy uh, for students to choose a number from the electricity uh, compared to a number in light. So I said, let us first go with this section uh, that has uh, the biggest percentage. And then later on, uh, when time allows, we shall also look at the other part. So today, our major focus is going to be on electrostatics. And here, I'm going to just pull out a section on what you call Coulomb's law of electrostatics. I understand some of you might not have reached this part, uh, but that is very okay. Uh, there is no offense, it is okay. But uh, it's going to help us to revise ahead of the teacher. And those who have reached this part already, then it will help you to revise uh, uh, hey, uh, to revise and remind yourself about this part. So today our major focus is going to be on what we call electrostatics. And you are, if those who have looked into question banks, you have seen that many of the numbers on calculations are mainly rotating about electrostatics, uh, columns law, electric field intensity, electric potential, and so on. So those are the major calculations in this part of electrostatics. When we go to the part of capacitors, also there is that section of calculating on capacitors. Then when we go to current electricity, also there is that part. So today I want us to understand this part very well as such that we can be able to do it. Now, what is the first thing? The first thing we need to know is what Coulomb's law of electrostatics. Uh, each, each and every one here, we know that whenever we have an atom, an atom has the charges, has the positive charges, has the negative charges, and has also the neutral charge, or what you call a neutron. Now, what is very important for you to know? For you to know what a Coulomb's law is, the Coulomb's law states that whenever you have any two charges, those two charges are directly proportional to each other. And what is very important here is to note that whenever you have those charges are going to be directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance of separation. Imagine I have my charge. This is my charge, which I can call charge Q1. And I have another charge here, which I can call charge Q2. So in order for me to find the kind of force existing between these two charges, these are my two charges placed close to each other. So in order for me to find a force between the two charges, these charges, I'm going to assume that the distance of separation between the two charges is equal to R. So our Coulomb told us that the two, in order for you to obtain the force between these two point charges, it means that you multiply, that's what you call a product. A product means multiplication. So we multiply the two charges. So we shall say that force is proportional, is directly proportional to the product of the charges, but which magnitude. So I'll come here and I say, I have charge one, I have charge two, and inversely proportional. So I will divide by my distance. So this distance here, we are calling it R, 
So you divide by the distance r, but everything squared. And this is what we call the Coulomb's law of electrostatics. What do you need to know more? You need to know more that when you are solving or when you are working out, you have to remove this proportional sign. And in order for us to remove it, I will introduce in an equal sign. So I will say force is equal to a constant, which we can call K, the magnitude Q1, Q2 out of R squared. And this is what we call the Coulomb's law of electrostatics. What do you need to know more? Is that it, the, the charges you have, the product is proportional to the force, that whenever the force is big, it means that the charges are also, uh, the product is also big. And whenever the radius or the distance of separation is big, it means that the force is going to be small. Whenever you have two things, just imagine you have, a, this is a boy and you have a boy. Whenever you are widely spaced or far away from each other, it means it is an implication that the force is going to be a very weak force. But when you are very close to each other, then the force of attraction, the force is going to be bigger. So that's what you call the inverse or that the distance of separation R is inversely proportional to F. And now that's what you call the Coulomb's law of electrostatics. So I'm going to remove this. But what does K stand for? So whenever you find that K, K stands for constant. And that constant K is what you call the constant of proportionality. So K is what you call the constant of proportionality. And how is it given? And it's given by K is equal to one out of four pi epsilon. That is our K. Whereby this epsilon you are seeing is what you call the permittivity. So that epsilon is what you call the permittivity of the medium. Now, what do you need to know is that the permittivity of the medium, it depends. At times they can tell you that your charges are being placed in air. So whenever our medium is air, then that means we shall have permittivity, then we write a note. So this means permittivity when our charges are placed in air. So this is what we call permittivity of free space. Permittivity of free space. So this means that your, mid, your charges are placed in air. However, at times, they can also twist the question and they say that your charges are placed in a liquid. Your charges is placed in this medium. So, however, many of the calculations we are going to be dealing with, you'll find that your medium or your permittivity is placed in air. So meaning that now whenever it is placed in air, it means that your K is going to change. So your K will become one out of four pi epsilon naught. So that one will be your value of K. Whenever your medium is, is that fine? Are we together on that point? Is that point okay? Can we continue? Uh, yes, please. I'm not here. Is that point okay? It's okay, sir. It is okay. Okay. Now I go to the next part. Now, what do you need to know? Now you need to know what is that permittivity. Now that k we have, we have said that your k is equal to one out of four pi epsilon. And we have said that whenever our medium is air, this one becomes epsilon naught. So what do you know? Your pi, we know it very well, is the same as 22 out of seven. You know that now from the experiments that have been carried out, our epsilon naught, is equivalent to 8.85 times 10 power negative 12 fermi, fermi per meter. 
Now, in order for you to find what your k is, I'll come and I say k is equal to 1 out of 4 pi epsilon naught. So I'll continue. Where there is epsilon naught, I'll put this. So I'll have 1 out of 4 times pi, which is 22 out of 7, then times epsilon naught, which is 8.85 .8 times 10 power negative 12. So that is your k. So can you press on your calculators and tell me what did you get for your value of k? Those who have calculators, when you press, what do you have? Waiting for your answer. Feel free to animate and you tell us your answer. What could be your answer? Anyone placing the calculator? I have 8.99 uh, times 10 power 9. 99 times nine. Mm -hmm. exponential 9. Exponential 9. 9. Very good. Uh -huh. So that is what you get. Uh -huh. Can you go on and round for me this to one day to zero decimal place? What do you have? What shall we have to zero decimal place? What is 8.99 to zero decimal place? It becomes nine, nine. times 10 eh? power nine. nine. And now nine. this is what we call our K. So whenever you find that your medium is air, this is what you are going to be using as your value for K. And its units are meters per fan. So your K always, it may not be given to you, but have it in the head. If that is the same as 10, 9 times 10 power, 9 meter per fan. So meaning that when I go back to my formula for finding the force, I'll say my force is K. Then I put the magnitude of charge 1, charge 2, divide by R squared. So now this is the formula that we are going to be using for our calculations. Are we together on that? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Very good. So uh, in case uh, maybe those who have done, please don't feel very bad. You can use Q as Q1, Q2 as well. That one is also very correct. Eh? Uh, don't mind. So you, when you use capital letters, it is very okay. When you use small letters, it is very okay. If it, the same thing happens to R, you can use small R or capital R. Also, that one is very, very okay. Are we together on that? Yes. Okay. Now we can continue. Now, in order for you to be able to make calculations in electrostatic force, you need to know the kind of force existing between charges. We know very well in real life, in real life, let me take you to in real life. Like whenever you are having a positive and a positive, positive and positive means that these are like charges. So whenever you have two charges that are like, these charges are going to repel each other. And therefore, once they repel each other, which kind of force shall we have? Repulsive force. We shall have a repulsion force. When you have two charges, so this force between these two charges is what you call the repulsive force or what you call the repulsion force. Whenever you have two opposite charges, it means that these two charges are going to attract each other meaning you're going to have an attractive force. When I talk about positive and positive, here you can take an example. When you have a boy, a boy and a boy, or a girl and a girl. When there is a boy and a boy, that is what we call repulsive. A girl and a girl, that is a repulsive. But when you put boy and a girl, then we can have what we call attraction, attraction force. So those two forces are very important in order for us to know 
which kind of uh, which kind which force is acting on the other and the moment you fail to know those forces then it means that you are going to fail to know how to indicate the force acting on the charge they want you to calculate take an example i'm going to give you an example uh, i'm going to give you an example here briefly and i show you how we do it take an example i may have a post sorry i may have my force here this is my force which is positive and i have another force which is negative now when i have these two forces this one being a positive and this one being a negative the kind of force we shall have like i've told you this one can be a boy and this one can be a girl so the kind of force between the two is going to be an attraction force because you know that always positive move towards the negative these positive are going to move towards the negative so the flow of our charges are going to be from positive towards the negative so that means that this positive force is going to be attracted and this negative one is going to be attracted so at the end of the day you are going to have an attraction force when i have a positive and i have maybe a positive these ones they cannot relate the positive gives out the charges so it will go like this it will go like this it will go like this this one will go like this it will take its own direction at the end of the day here you have nothing like an attractive force but they will be repairing each other and that's what you call the repulsion force now what am i leading to is for you you must be able to indicate which kind of force is being experienced but we are going to have. yes please yeah okay uh, are we good to continue could we continue sir yes teacher now we are going to start on the first example they are telling us that find a force between two point charges placed at a distance 10 centimeters apart in air so i'm going to come i'm going to make my simple sketch that this is my charge this charge here is the positive and it is four microcoulomb then i have another charge here that is negative and this charge here is three microcoulomb i can put the negative i can put the positive i'm going to ask you which kind of force is acting between the two charges which kind of force is between those two charges attractive attractive it is force attractive force very good now being an attractive force it means that here this is going to be my arrow this one is going to be my arrow since it is an attractive force, it means the positive and the negative are going to be coming close to each other. So this is the kind of force between the two, which we are calling the attraction force. And the distance between these two is what? 10 centimeters. Is that part okay for everyone? <laughs> yeah, yo. Yes, teacher. Uh -huh. Now we are going to start on our calculation now when you are carrying out the calculations one your distance must always be in meters so your distance is always in meters so you can first summarize one of your charges you have is the positive four so it's the positive four micro -colour. however you need to know what does micro mean micro means a smaller unit and micro is equivalent to one times 10 power negative six, or what you call one exponent negative six. So that means that our Q1 is the same as four exponent negative C quorum. Is that point okay? Yes, sir. Yes. You tell me, what is our Q2 equaling to? Negative three times ten power negative six. Uh -huh. Negative three times ten power negative six. Very good. Then we have our distance R. 
our distance error is 10 centimeters. But whenever we are carrying out calculations, we take back to the standard units. So we have to convert centimeters to meters. And remember, was it in pregnant? We did something, held, died, many zit dogs eh? cried much, something like that. So now we are moving from meet from centimeters and we are going to meters. So when you are moving from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, what do you do? Divide. We do. Very good. So I have one, zero, zero. So that means we are going to get our 10 centimeters. We divide by 100. And what shall we have? 0 0.1. 0 0.1 meters. That is our R. So now we are going to calculate the force. So we shall say force is equal to K. Charge one, charge two, magnitude out of R squared. So this is the same as our K. So we say that K is equivalent to nine exponent 90 meter uh, uh, fermi meter. So meter per fermi. Now we continue. Our K will be nine times 10 power nine, then times. Now the use of the magnitude here is to absorb any negative. Whenever you have a negative charge, let me say negative three microgram, and you put them in the magnitude, this negative here is being absorbed by the magnitude. So that is the same as a positive. So whenever you're calculating, you don't carry the negative, the sign, because you have the magnitude, and that magnitude takes away the negative. So I'll have now uh, four times 10 power negative six times three times 10 power negative six, everything divided by 0 0.1 squared. So we shall have our force is equal to, can we first carry out the multiplication in the numerator? Can we place it in our calculator and we find out what do we have? The numerator, nine, mm-hmm. We have an answer. It's 1.08 times 10 power negative 1. Okay, 1.08 1. times 10 power negative 1. 1. one. Okay, good. Divide by 0 0.1. But everything what? Squared. Uh -huh. Can we continue and find out what is going to be our force? What the force? It's going to be forty. Remember, the distance is squared, so make sure you square. One point one times ten power one. One point one. Times 10 power? One. One. Okay. So one of the aha, uh -huh, 1.1 times 10 power? Okay. What about the rest? What are you getting? Have you rounded off this 1.1? 1. 1? Yes. You round, okay, first give us what you had. Give us what you had. 1.08 times 10 power 1. 1.08 times 10 power 1. So now, always first never round off from your calculator. And always, whenever you get a value that needs rounding off, at least first write it to three decimal places before you round off. So now that means that our force is going to be 10.8 newtons. I don't know whether we have got that. Yes. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now this is your force. Have we understood? Sir, yes. How do you get ten point eight? How do you get ten point eight? Eh? 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you get this 1.0 times 10 power 1? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. You place that on your calculator. What do you have? Express. Ten point eight. Ah, uh, so that's how we get it. Okay. Okay. So now this is what we call the force between the two. Okay. Hope that is clear. Can we go to the next one? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh -huh. Let me first allow it right. Let's first write and then we work out. The first write the question, then we work out together. Let me know after writing. Okay, checking the chat. Okay, finished. Eh? Okay, good. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to this space may not be okay, but it can be a now, though it will not be a now. So allow me to, okay, but it will be enough. We shall utilize it very well. Now, the first thing I want you to know is I'm going to, uh, we are going to first identify the kind of force. They want us to find the force on Q3. 
And this is our Q3. Now I'm going to ask you, when you look at Q3, which charge is it carrying? A positive, negative? Which charge is Q3 carrying? A positive. A positive charge. So allow me, allow me to share. A yes, very good. Allow me to share this screen. I, let me hope everyone is seeing out a whiteboard. Yes. Yes, eh? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I have three charges. I have the first one, which is our Q1, and Q1 is a positive charge. I have another charge here, which is a negative charge, and this is our Q2. Then I have another charge here, which yeah. is Q3, and it is a positive charge. Now, which force do we want to find? We want to find a force acting on this charge here. That's what, that is our main interest. Now, when we are finding the, the force acting on that charge, we have to find a force on charge Q3 due to charge one. The force on charge Q3 due to charge Q2. I'm going to first ask you, when you look at charge, let me, I'm going to first remove charge Q2, first ignore this, and you look at post this charge here, Q1 and Q3. Which kind of force is between Q1 and Q3? Repulsion. Repulsion, eh? Is yes. everyone seeing that? Are we seeing that? Are we seeing that is the repulsion force? When you look, this is positive and this is positive. And whenever they are positive, it means they are going to repel. So meaning that this force is going to pull this side and this force is going to pull this side. Are you not seeing that? Yeah. Is that okay? Yes, sir. So I'm going to write force on charge two three due to charge one, like that. So when you look at Q3, the force acting on it is pulling this side, is the green one. Now I'm going to come back. I put back the other our charge that it was that was there. We had our Q2. When you look at Q2, it's a negative. Now I want you to look at this is Q2 and this is Q3. Which kind of force is between the two? Attraction, attraction force. Attraction, attraction force. force, not so. Meaning that this one is going to pull. And this one holds. Are you not seeing that? So we are seeing. Yes. Uh -huh. So now here I'm going to write force on two three due to charge two. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Sir. Uh -huh. Now, why am I doing so? I want you to take note that the forces acting on Q3, one of them is pointing to the right, another one is pointing to the left. They are going to be very crucial whenever we are telling the direction. And that is where many of us go wrong when we are telling the direction and the angle. So this is how we do them. Let's move everyone now as not how we get the forces and the direction. Now we go to our calculation. Now we, from here up to here, our distance was given as 20 centimeters. And from here, up to there, it was given as 10 what? Centimeters. Centimeters. So now I'm going to first find the force. I'm going to find this one, the force on charge three due to charge one. We say this is K, Q1, Q3 out of R squared. So what is our K? Nine exponential nine. Nine, very good times. What is our charge one? 46.3 times 10 power. Uh -huh, very good. 46.3 times 10 power negative. Six. Six. Okay, let me just put this for those who are just joining in. Uh, this was 23.4 microcon. Uh -huh, then times, what is our charge two three? 23.4 times 10 power negative 6. Ah, very good. All of it divided by, what is our R? Our R is the distance from Q1 to charge Q3. So from Q1 to charge Q3, what distance do we have? 
30 centimeters. 30 centimeters, very good. So you get the 20 and the 10. So, and, but we said we don't use in centimeters, we convert them to? Meters. Meters. So what is 30 centimeters in meters? 0 0.3. Uh -huh. So we shall have 0 0.3, everything squared. So can we find that first? Let everyone put calculate and find out what do we have. The order are you calculating? Huh? Have people got the answer? I'm saying some things in the chat. Huh? I want to see your answers. What are you getting? So put in your calculator and calculate. Yeah, someone has put in the chat 108.342. Okay, 108.342. So that is Galax and Barbie, and these are Newtons. Okay, very good. Uh huh. Now, let's move the rest. We are getting that same answer. Since two people have got the same that answer, it means it is right. Now, if this is our answer, I'm going to go on. This is our magnitude, but which direction is this force? Which side is it facing? Right or left? Uh huh. I want you to look at this force, Q31. Which side is this? Is it the right or the left? Uh -huh. Right. So I'm going to say my force is this to the right. Remember that force is a vector quantity. So when I'm stating it, I state the magnitude, I give the direction. So 108.342 is the magnitude. To the right is the direction. So that is how I state it. Now I'm going to go to the next one. We are going to go on and find what is the charge due to charge two. So I do the same, I'll get my K magnitude charge Q2 and charge Q3 divided by R squared. So our K is the nine times 10 power nine times Q2, which is 34.7 exponent negative six times 23.4 exponent negative six, all of it divided by, what are we going to divide with? What is the distance between Q2 and Q3? 0 0.1 meters. 0 0.1 meters. 0 0.1 meters. Uh -huh, very good. So it says 0 0.1, everything squared. So can we go on and we get the answer? Get the answer. Uh -huh. Babi is asking why to the right. Babi, Babi, talk to us. Babi, yes, teacher. Yes, Babi, are you not seeing this arrow? Yes. Yes. Which hand is it? Is it pointing towards? To the right. Yes. So that's why you are saying to the right. Babi, you tell us what about this one? Which direction are you going to give? It's moving to the left, but. The left. Hmm. Yeah, but teacher, I don't know why we are saying that, like, why is the arrow facing to the right? Why the arrow is facing to the right? Okay, now, yes. Babi, Babi, yes, initially, initially, we had this one, the positive, and the positive. Are you seeing? Yes. And we say that when we have two forces, a positive and a positive, these two forces, which kind of force is between the two? A repulsion force. Repulsion force. So when they are repulsed, they are repulsed. That means that this one is going to pull this side. This one is going to pull this side. Not so. Yes. Yes. So and when you look at that too, that is actually what is happening. 
because our interest is on charge two three, so we take the arrow, the direction of its force. Oh, yes, I understand now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. Members, have we got the answer here? You want to know which answer you're getting? Let's your calculators. Place, place, place. Uh huh. Dennis is getting seven hundred thirty. Uh, Dennis is getting seven hundred. Hey, seven. Uh -huh. some uh huh seven hundred thirty point seven eight two newtons. So I want uh Samuel, can you check? Galaxy is okay. Dennis is okay. Uh, Samuel, check. Why are you getting seven hundred eighty? Some will check and see whether it is just a mistake. Okay, King, that is okay. Seven hundred. Okay. Now, since everyone is getting this, then the next thing I'm going to put is the direction. So which direction is this force? The theory two. Left. Which to the left. Very good. Uh -huh. Now, after doing so, now it means that I know how my force is being positioned. I want to move to the second blackboard, whiteboard. Can I move on or there are people who are still writing? I move on. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when I go to the second board, I'm going to have something like this. Sorry, this was, I think, a uh, negative. So this is what I'm going to have. I have my Q3 here. I had one of my forces, F31, and I had another force this side, which was F. Two, three, two. When the answer you got for this force, uh, which was three one, uh, was one hundred eight point three four two newtons, and the force you got for this one, uh, F three two was uh seven hundred thirty point seven eight two newtons. Now I'm going to look at the resultant. When you look at F31 and F32, who is pulling the other? Who is pulling F3. the other? F31. Uh-huh. F3. Oh, this one is 730. This one Sorry, is 100. So F3. who is yes? F32. F32. So now I'm going to find my net force. The net force is like the total force acting on Q3. So this one being bigger is the one I'm going to say. I'm going to say now F32 minus F31. So I'll end up with F32, which is 730.782 minus 108.342. So members, what do you get? What do you get? Calculate, subtract, and tell us what you have. Uh, six to two. Uh, so it is six to two point four four newtons. 
So this is the net force. And what is the direction? In which direction is this force going to be acting? Where is that force pulling towards? Which side? Aha, uh -huh. very good, Bella. Very good, Bobby. Perfect. So I'm going to say 62.44 newtons to the left, to the left. So that is my answer. So 6224 is what we call the magnitude or the size of the force. Uh, what I have as to the left is my direction. And you remember very when we are describing the force, we mentioned the magnitude and we mentioned the direction. Is that point? Has everyone understood? Yes, teacher. Okay. Can we look at another example? Are we good to go? I want you to do something for me, another activity. Okay. Hope we are good, eh? Yes, sir. Okay. okay, okay. Okay, I have another one. I have another one that I want you to try out. And it is saying, uh, I have a question. Yes, please ask. So, for the net force, do we consider the size of the force? Which one is bigger, or we consider some other thing? Okay, now you can consider two things. One, you can consider which force is bigger than the other. Secondly, you can also look at the directions they are facing. Now, but what you need to know is that when you you consider the directions they are facing. Anything towards the right is always positive. Towards the left is always negative. So that means that your net force is going to be this F32, but since it is pointing in a negative direction, I write it as negative 730.782. Then plus, since this one, F31 is pointing to the right, I write it as positive. 108.342. So when you add, you will end up with negative 622.44. However, when you are writing a force, the use of this negative is to show you the direction. So I'm going to drop this direct negative and I write 622.4, then I write to the left. The meaning of this negative show you that your force was pointing in a negative direction. Are we together? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I was still, uh, wait. So I was saying the figure below, uh, the figure below shows uh, the charges, uh, charges uh, placed at A, B, and C, determine, determine the resultant, determine the resultant force on uh, the charge at B placed in air. So I have my charge here, which is A, and there are 10 centimeters. I have another one, charge B, and it is five centimeters. And here there is C. So this is negative seven microcoram. Uh, this is four microcoram. And this is negative three microcoram. Now, the first thing I want you to, to take is to first identify the forces acting on B. That is the first thing you need to find out. Which forces are acting on B? And what is, are their directions? So first write, and then we discuss that.
Uh, has everyone reached finished writing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Now we are going to first identify what are we interested in? We are interested in finding out the forces acting on B. Now, which force is between negative between A and B? Attractive force. Attractive force. Is everyone seeing that? Yes. Uh -huh. So that means that my arrow here is going to be pointing like that, and this arrow is going to be pointing like that. Are we seeing? However, since we are interested in B, is the force we are interested in, force at B due to A. And then I look at B and C. Which kind of force do we have? Attractive force. Attractive. So meaning that my arrow is going to come like this and another one comes like this from C. So that means this is going to be my force at B due to C. So the forces acting on, on that one is going to be like that. Have we understood that? Yes. Is that okay? Okay, now can we go on and calculate the force at B due to A? and also the force at B due to C, and we get. So let's have one calculate. Okay, members getting the answers. Okay. Okay, I've seen some answers in the chat. Galax is telling us BA is 10. Uh, another one is telling us, okay, good. So let's calculate the rest. We have more three minutes, but just confirm that also you are getting what you are getting. BA, someone is saying is getting 10.8 newtons. And BC, someone is saying is getting 100.8. Okay, 100.8 newtons. Kindly confirm that you are also getting the same answers. Okay. Uh -huh. So Galax has confirmed. Ababi has also confirmed the same answers. Someone is saying the net force is 90 uh, newtons uh, to the right. Okay. Uh huh. Members, can you get also the net force? And you tell us what are you getting for the net force? 
and which direction is it taking? Okay, the net force. Okay, Sadiq is saying 90 to the right, 90 to the right. Very good. Yes, that is very correct. So it is 90 newtons towards the right. Very good. Okay. 90 to the right, 90 to the right. Very good. Okay. Uh -huh. We do another one. We do another one. Hope we are not leaving anyone behind. Anyone we are leaving behind and you may need some assistance. Now we are trying that on your own, uh, but I want you to tell me which kind of what is where is your arrow pointing for the forces acting on Q2? That is what I'm going to first be interested in. When you get that, I want you to indicate the force, the direction for your forces on Q2. Which direction are they pointing? Oh, uh, someone is asking, they are micro. Sorry for the handwriting, they are micro. They are micro. I think it is the handwriting. They are micro. Yes, uh, nano, nano, we use the N. So they are micro, micro columns. So in which direction are your, is, are your forces acting on Q2? Uh-huh, Bujo is saying all of them are to the left, okay? Thank you, Bujo. Hmm. All to the left, Bobby is also saying so. Hmm. What about the rest? Bobby is saying to the left, Bujo is saying to the left. And the rest for you, what are you saying? Is everyone not saying that they are going to the left or not? Okay, Shantai is saying all to the left, left, better left. Uh, Miriam left, okay. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. uh, all of them are moving towards Q3, left. Uh -huh. Dennis, Dennis Ochen, uh, please, for you are saying Q1, right, Q3, left. Ochen, you need to check out Ochen. 
or chain check out the direction. That direction matters because it will affect you when you are getting the resultant. Hmm. The moment you fail to know the direction, those forces, it is going to be hard for you to get the resultant. Uh, okay. Ochen, have you not still mistake? Then it's Ochen. Hmm. Uh, Ochen, check out. Positive and negative, it means it is attraction. So it will be like this. Positive and these are negatives. So meaning this one is going to be pulling this side. This one will also be pulling this side. So they can that one can't go to the right. So let's find out. I want you to find out the force on two due to charge one and the force on two due to charge three. So let's calculate. Some people as if they have started getting, okay, okay, I'll change. Calculating. Okay, I'm saying people have read, put some answers. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh -huh. so someone is saying 202.5.
Oh, Miriam. Miriam, was that your final answer? Oh, Babi, Babi, there is something you are not doing right. Babi, I don't know. Something is not right with your answers. Either you forgot to convert to centimeters or something. I don't know. Babi, check out. Aha, uh -huh, Bella, yeah. Bella, yeah. Aha, uh -huh, Sadiq, yes. Uh, Sadiq, yes. Uh, Babi, which mistake did you make? Uh, Samuel, correct. Babi? Yeah. Yes, which mistake did you make? I'm seeing 1.35. Did you convert your centimeters to meters? Yes, I did. Did you square them? Yes, I squared them. How come you're getting? Uh -huh. What did you have up? Read it for I me. Had... What was... mm -hmm. I had nine exponential parts. Exponential nine mm -hmm. times two exponential negative six mm -hmm. times three exponential negative six. Okay, out of out of zero point two square. Ah, ah, that was the mistake. Yes. So, Bobby, what is two centimeters to meters? What do you divide with? Divide by a hundred. Uh, so to divide by 100, what do you get? Oh, it is 0 0.02. Uh, uh, yeah. So that was the mistake. But the, your answers were a little okay just because of that mistake. Okay. Thank you. I've realized. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, members, let me hope uh, that point is okay. Now we are going to go to the second part. Uh, which screen are you seeing? Are you still seeing a whiteboard or another screen? Whiteboard. Whiteboard. Oh. What about now? The slides. The slides. Uh -huh. Now, which slide are you seeing? Final result and false at C. Uh -huh. Okay, let us first write that. Let us first write now that. But I okay, this is a square, but I want you to draw it in, in a better way, in a better square, way. better than mine. When you finish, you let me know. Okay, people are finished. Good. Now, the first thing you need to get, we are going to get the force on C. And this is where our C is. Now, it is always very important for you to know how those forces are acting. Because the moment you fail to indicate those forces, it means you are going to fail the diagram. I want you to tell me, 
Uh -huh. Now I'm, you're going to allow me to share now with the white screen. Can I, I'm going to share the white screen, hoping everyone has finished. Is it fine? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, this is what we have. This is our square. Now, when you look at our square, our square has the following, has negative four microcoram, has positive eight microcoram, has the positive three microcoram, and it has positive five microcoram. So they're telling us this side is four centimeters and this side is four centimeters. Hope that's how our diagram is. Not so? A, B, yes. C, and D. Now I want you, the, I'm going to be asking, we are going to first find a force acting on C due to D. Which kind of force is between D and C? Repulsion. Repulsion, uh -huh. Now you tell me, in which direction is our force going to be? To the uh, right. To the right. Is everyone seeing that? No. You are not? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Someone who has mentioned to the right, can you tell us? Uh -huh. Someone who has mentioned to the right. Which well, force is that? Mm -hmm. Continue. Since they are repelling each other, so the force D, it's going to be moving to the left, and then the force C is going to be moving to the right because they can't be moving in the same direction. And since we are taking the forces acting on C, so it will be to the right. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh -huh. That is good. So that is one. Very good. Thank you. So here, um, oh, sorry. Uh, so we are going to have our force acting like this. And this is going to be the force at C due to D. Very good. Uh-huh. Let us go to B and C. B and C. Which kind of force shall we have? B and C. Repulsive. Uh -huh, repulsive. Very good. Uh -huh. Very good. Uh -huh. So where will our arrow be facing? Upward. Upward. Uh -huh, very good. So this arrow is going to oh, draw a better one, don't do like mine. So that arrow is going to be up. So I'm going to draw this arrow pointing upwards like that. So that is force uh, on C due to B. Very good. Uh -huh. Now another one, A and C. Attractive. Attraction. Uh, so where will our arrow be facing? It will be like this. Are you not seeing? Yes. Uh, so I'm going to move this since we want the one at at C. So now this is going to be the force on C due to A. Is that thing be very okay to everyone? Yes. Yes, teacher. Now the next thing we are going to find out. Eh? Uh, what is the distance between D and C? Force. Uh, what about between B and C? Four centimeters. Four centimeters. So which distance do we need to find? A and C. Do we know it? Yes. Uh, what is it? We do not know it. We don't know it. Very good. So that one we are going to find it. So we shall have this, have this, have this. So I have said here you have four, here you have four. And you remember this is night. So how do we find this distance A to C? Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem. So we know A squared plus B squared is equal to C. Uh -huh. What is our A? Uh, 
4 centimeters. Uh, four so centimeters. we shall have 4 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 6 squared. Uh, so this is what? You make your calculation and you tell us what is C is. 32. 32 uh, is equal to C squared. So get a square root, get a square root. So C is equal to? Five point seven. Uh, now, for such numbers, in order for you to be accurate, write to at least four decimal places. Yeah, five point. Five point six five six nine. Ah, uh, these are centimeters. Okay, now. Uh, the first thing I want you everyone to find, first five, let everyone find what is first F C D and what is C B. Let everyone first find. Then we are going to find together C A. Let everyone first get C D and C B. Then we work out together the other one. Ah, uh, it's more. Uh -huh. So I'm waiting for your calculations. Let's calculate. Okay, I want to check. Uh huh. Someone is saying, uh, one thirty-five. Okay, so people are getting that. Okay, I'm also going to add. Uh, Eighty four, okay. So people here are getting eighty four point three seven five newtons, and here I've seen eighty 
one, I've seen one, 135, 135, okay. Is everyone getting that and we continue? Yes, sir. Okay, now uh, we go to the next one. Now, uh, the next one we need to get is this one, A and C. Get it, get it. Now, I want you to first get that SC or CA. CA. Can we also get it and find out what we are getting? Get CA, everyone. Mm. So find C A. Okay. Uh -huh. People are telling me they are getting 33.75. That is Bobby. What about the rest? Uh -huh. Ah, uh, okay. That is very good, members. Now I come. Now, one thing now we are going to go on. The special thing about such forces is that now this force, when you look at this force, it is at an angle. And all forces that are not like when you are adding, you can add things going in the north and the south, meaning that this force. Let me hope everyone here has done resolving. Has everyone done resolving? Or forces? Should I take that assumption? Okay, good. Yes. Now we have this force here, which is 33.75. This force, we must resolve it towards this side, and we must resolve this force towards this side. But before we resolve, we need to know which angle do we have here? And how are we going to get that angle? In order for us to get that angle, we are going to go. We know very well that the figure we have is a square, which is four, which is four. And this is our diagonal. Now, if I want to get this angle theta, how do we get the angle theta? How shall we get that theta? Tan theta is equal to four out of four. Uh, tan theta is equal to the opposite, which is four, divided by the adjacent, which is four. So tan theta is equal to one, and now we shall say theta is equal to tan inverse of one. Members, what is your theta? Is it 
45 everyone okay yes. good now i will come back here and now i replace here with 45 degrees our force was 43.75 the force here Seven. So I got seven. seven i got 33.749 exponential negative six ah there is no exponential check out check out check out you read for us what you had it is nine no exponential uh-huh nine uh-huh times three exponential negative six mm -hmm. times four exponential negative six mm -hmm. all over five six five point six nine all square i know it was five point six five exponent negative two all of it squared you did not convert 5.65 into meters yes hey so that was the mistake okay now this is our force i don't know how members you are taught how to resolve but i want us to get that force ca in vector form how are we going to resolve once i when i want to get this x component which 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 two government pressure shall we use? I don't know. Does it find out to resolve? Yes, sir. Okay. So you tell me what is your x component? X component is like when you are resolving towards this ax axis here. 33.75 cos mm -hmm. of 45. Cos 45. Hope everyone is seeing that. Is that okay to everyone? Why she has said 45 is because also here there is 45. Uh -huh. Then what about f of y? Is there one also? 33.75 cos of 45. Cos of 45, okay. So let's place our calculators and find what is your fx, what is your f1. 23.8 23.86 newtons and 23.864 newtons so that is your fx fy in case you want to write it in another format in you'll find some at times people writing it like this it is also okay as long as you know how to use it now after doing so we are going to get our net force now when we go back to our net force that means uh let me take you back that means that this ca we have resolved it and upon and when we resolved it we ke, we have come out with a force along this axis pointing like this and that force we, was what 28 what force was that 28 oh okay 28.8649, sorry, 23, 23.8649. We have also resolved that force. And down here, we also had 23.8649 Newtons. Now that means that our force acting on C, you have more two forces. This, you have this, uh, you have this force here, you have this force, you have this force, and you have this force. So meaning now you're going to get your resultant force. So meaning in order for you now to get your resultant force, what are you going to do? You are going to come and say, which forces do you have along the x-axis? Are you seeing this force and this force? 
hope members are seeing them. You have this force and you have this force. So meaning this one being bigger than this one, I'll say 84.375 minus 23.8649. And I get my answer. Then I look at Fy. Which forces do I have along Y? I have this one up and I have this one down. Which one is bigger? The one up. So I'll say 135 minus 23.8649. Members, are we together on that point? Tutor, could you please repeat there? Uh, which part? The one where you're subtracting the forces. The fo here, where I'm subtracting, here? Yes. Uh -huh. Did you understand this part of 23.98645? Yes. Uh -huh. Now, along the x-axis, when you look at this x, eh, this force of CA, we have separated it such that you get one component along the y and one component along the x. Because whenever it is diagonal, we cannot get the resultant there. It is easy for us to get the, the, the resultant when it is either horizontal or vertical. Now, this that means that horizontally like this, you have two forces. You have this force pulling this side, and you have this force pulling this side. Meaning that now, you are going to ask yourself, which one is pulling the other? That CD is going in the positive direction. And being bigger, it means it can pull the other. So that's why we are subtracting. Or you can take it that forces that point in the positive direction are positive. Forces that point in the negative direction are negative. So this is positive and this is negative. Is it clear? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. So can we get what is our Fx and what is our Fy? What are you getting for Fx and what are you getting? Members, find out what is your Fx. When you subtract, what do you get? Okay, 60.5. Okay, 60.5. One zero five newtons. Okay, then Fx. Oh, that for oh, that was Fx. I think that is Fx. Let's find for Fy. Okay, Bab is getting one one. Uh, point one three five one. Okay, members, what are you getting? The same, okay. Okay, aha, uh -huh, the same. So now I'm going to come here and I write one, one, one point one three five uh, newtons. Uh, is that okay, members? Are we good to continue? Okay, I think we can continue. Now, what comes next is you knowing how to get the magnitude, how to get the direction. Now, yes, please. Like at our school, yeah, mm. we used like to remove to draw the article wound, like the article finger, like in a campus form. Then we, mm. we went on adding angles, like adding angles on, like 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 that force on FCD, but like that it is on angle zero. Uh, that force plus cost like for the Y, 
component like f f y equals uh, force c d cos zero plus uh, f c b cos k plus plus the other force plus plus two two five. Like went on adding angles for oh, the, that is okay. The vertical but, component and the horizontal component. Okay, yes, that is okay. You can add those angles, but they don't change anything. Yes, as long as your force is horizontal or vertical and you are resolving, these forces don't don't contribute, they remain the same. Okay, okay. Mm, they remain the same. Okay, now we go to the next part. So we have obtained our FX as 60.5105 newtons, and we have obtained our FY as 11.135 newtons. Now you are going to sketch. Now you need to know that in forces, forces that go to this side are positive. Forces that go down are negative. Forces that go this side are, po are negative, and forces that go up are positive. So when I'm constructing here, fx is positive and fy is positive. So when I come to my Cartesian plane like this, this one being fx positive, I'm going to assume it is here. This one being fy, so I can put 60.5105. This one being a positive, I'm also going to put it up here as 11.135. And therefore, I will come and I draw a line like this. That this force says I'm meeting here. So now this is my f of x and this is my f of y. So the f y is here and the f x is here. So the force connecting, because this is like your initial point, the force connecting the initial point and the final point is what gives you the resultant. Now, this is our resultant. And when you look at this triangle we have drawn, this is like a Pythagorean theorem, meaning that to get our resultant force, we shall get the square root of f of x squared plus f of y squared. Is that okay, members? Yes. Okay. Can you find the answers? Find the answers. Okay, uh -huh. have members got the answer? Members are telling me they are getting 126.5406 newtons. Uh -huh. I think that is very, very okay. Okay, uh, perfect, perfect, good. Now, this is your magnitude. Now we are going to find what is the direction. The direction is that angle your resultant makes with a force. So the angle here is what gives you your resultant. When you look at this angle, it gives you f of y, it gives you f of x. So meaning to get theta, you can say that tan theta is equal to opposite, which is fy, out of adjacent, which is fx. So meaning to get your theta, you just get the tan inverse always of your f of y out of f of x. Members, can we get the angle? 
and we find what angle are we getting. Calculate the angle. Okay, Bella, that is correct. Sixty one point. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sixty one. So members are getting sixty one point four degree. Yeah? Degrees. Okay. Those who are getting that one, sixty one point four, sixty one point four three. Yes, that is it. Correct. Now, that how are you going to state your final answer? So your final answer, you can say that the resultant force. Uh, let me put it away. The magnitude of the resultant force. is 126.5406 newtons in the direction in the direction uh, 61.43 degrees or 61.4 degrees above above the positive horizontal that is Someone can state it like that. Another person can say in the direction 61.43, uh, with the uh, which force is this this fx with the 60.5105 Newton force. Someone can as well state it like that. So all of them are very correct. I don't know whether members we are good on that. Any question or it is clear? Okay. Okay, members are telling me it is very clear. Okay, I'm, can I stop sharing? I want to just give you some numbers you're going to try out. I stop sharing. Okay. So let me just share this one screen. And then uh, you in your free time, feel free to try out this number. Wait. Oh. oh, OK. You can try out that number. That is one of the numbers I can give you to try out. Uh, but uh, this evening, I will send you some exercise. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Let me pray that I'm well, and then I will send you an exercise to try out in your free time. Hope that is okay. Are we together, members? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, you try out this number. I don't know that because I don't know the time. Okay, the hour time is almost done, but still do the same. Uh, but one thing you need to find out is always find out the angles you have. Now here, since they want the result at C, uh, you look at this is negative and negative, the force is going to be repulsion. So I expect your arrow to be like that. This is negative and positive, so the force is going to be attractive. It will be like that. Then the next thing you need to know is to come and find out the angles, mainly which angles. So you divide this into here, 
get the angle you have there. Then this angle you get here can help you to get the rest of the angles. So you'll try out and feel free to send me your message uh, on what you are getting. Otherwise, I want us to end here and then we shall meet tomorrow for, I don't know, which subject do you have tomorrow? Chemistry? Okay, so we shall start from there. Can we have our volunteer to lead us uh, in the closing prayer? Oh, oh, someone wants the final answers for you. Oh, okay. Okay, for this last number, your final answer, uh, your final answer should be uh, 1.655 newtons. That should be your answer, 1.655 newtons. And then the angle is 23.23. .23. Hope that is okay. Have you written it? Yeah, so in case you try, that is what you are going to get. Someone to lead us in a closing prayer. Who wants to lead us? Anyone to lead us? Tomorrow, tomorrow is history, okay, okay. Let me see. Okay, anyone, anyone who wants to lead us? Okay, I choose Bella. Bella, lead us in a word of prayer. Okay, it seems people do not want to pray. Okay, let me wish you a good evening. Uh, we shall meet the next time of our meeting. Oh, okay, okay, Bella. Okay, okay, it is fine, Bella. Okay, have a nice evening, everyone.